We're joined by Richard Hirschman today, who you might know through his amazing work and investigative work that he's been doing, uh, it, along with Jane Ruby, Dr. Jane Ruby, and many others around the world who are trying to figure out exactly what is happening to the bodies of the injected individuals. The findings that Richard and, and others, uh, his colleagues globally, have come across are truly, truly shocking. And he joins us today. Richard's an embalmer of 21 years. Richard, thank you so much for, for coming on with, with us today. Yes, thank you for having me, Maria. It's an honor to have you. So, Richard, please just talk to talk to the audience a little bit about your experience. I know that a lot of them have seen your work and, and Dr. Jane Ruby's, uh, you know, exposed so much. But I really want people to get to know you and your experience before we go through some of these findings. And I will just say for the audience right now that what the images that we're going to go through today are incredibly graphic in nature. So you need to be mindful of that. But I believe it's something that everyone needs to see, especially, um, you know, it, it, to have it forwarded to your loved ones who may be considering more of these shots. But um, but back to you, Richard, your experience and, and how you came to, to start finding this. Yes, um, like you said, I've been uh, I've been embalming probably uh, over 21 years now. Um, and uh, I got fully licensed uh, after my schooling and everything back in uh, the end of 2004. Uh, and I've worked for places where we would embalm, you know, from places that would embalm maybe 100 bodies to a year to places where we would embalm about 1,000 bodies a year. So I'm no uh, stranger to the embalming process. I have seen embalming several times thousands of times. And, um, you know, when the uh, COVID stuff started happening and, and everybody was getting scared of COVID and all that stuff, um, you know, we around the funeral business were here in the news just like everybody else. Um, and, but we weren't really seeing much of a change uh, in the number of deaths until later in uh, 2020, uh, starting getting towards the fall. Then um, in January of 21, things got really, really busy uh, in the funeral business. I mean, we were seeing, I mean, we were seeing so many people that were dying. And of course, most of them were being labeled as COVID. Um, it's, at least that's what it seemed like. And a lot of times, you know, I don't believe COVID was the issue. Maybe they might have had COVID. Um, but around May or June of 21, and, and, and I say that because it's hard for me to pinpoint when I started noticing something wrong. Because I had noticed, you know, there was an increase in blood clotting in general with the embalming process. But as the, uh, as the time went along, around May or June, I started noticing something's just different about the blood. And of course, the pandemic has been around, everybody's screaming COVID, and you, you don't kind of think much of it. But then I started noticing these clots were kind of really starting to be different, and they were holding together unlike clots uh, from many you know years of experience um, and I started noticing I was getting some even in some arteries well then in uh, uh, September of last year September of 21 uh, I took my first image because as I'm talking about these strange clots with people they just were not understanding the severity of what I'm talking about there's something just totally different about the blood. The blood is not the same. And it's kind of hard for me to put my finger on it because I'm not a doctor, nor am I a scientist. I'm an embalmer. But I'm very familiar with the embalming process. I know what blood's supposed to look like. I know what clots are like. And these are different. And so I took my first picture in, the end, in uh, late uh, September of 21. And I started to document what I'm seeing because I had no proof of what I'm seeing. It just, you know, I mean, words are one thing. You can explain something all day long to somebody and sometimes it doesn't take, well, sometimes it literally takes seeing it for yourself to understand 
what we're talking about. And so that's why I started taking pictures. And then I started collecting, I tried getting a couple of samples. Um, I came out, Dr. Jane Ruby, I was connected with um, Dr. Ruby through, um, through another uh, person that was a whistleblower. And uh, I shared with that person some of the images and that person was, was shocked. And um, so got me in connect, contact with, with Jane Ruby. And, and because of that now, uh, people are starting to open up their eyes and say, hey, you know, this is something different. I've been contacted by so many different doctors in different areas, different fields, different areas of the states. Many of them would sit there and even say, had you not showed your images, we would, we would have no idea what's going on. Because wow. once they're out of that? the care of the doctor. Oh, so, so, sorry, do finish what you were saying and then I have a follow-up yeah. question. They were saying that once, once a patient is out of their care, they, they'll, they'll never see this stuff. And that was one of my concerns about what I'm seeing. I, because all these people are dying of who knows what, strokes, heart attacks, cancers, but yet there's this similar thing happening with so many of them with these strange fibrous clots in their vascular system. Doesn't matter what they died of, whether they died of, you know, uh, a heart attack or a stroke or, or, or anything else. I'm finding these, these strange clots in people, which is something that I've never seen before in all of my years of doing this. Have you heard from doctors internationally that they're finding the same that, that you know, or, or from, from your colleagues internationally? I want to make sure that what you've found isn't just in the United States. People are seeing this all over the world, right? I believe they are. Um, you did an interview with uh, John O'Looney recently, which was absolutely fascinating. He was the first undertaker that I had, wa had watched on, and it was an old Facebook thing. And of course they took it down pretty quick, but I, I watched it. And as I was listening to the description of what he was saying, as a mortician myself, I understood, um, you know, and he didn't share images. You know, a lot of people in my field, they find that is a uh, kind of a taboo thing to do. We just don't normally share what we see in the embalming room. Um, but I knew what he was talking about because I'm a mortician myself. I see, you know, the same stuff and, and, you know, the images that I have take what he has said and it gives it more understanding of what it is he's talking about. So, and I do know uh, in the very beginning, I was fact checked by PolitiFact and it was fascinating. You know, she put out there uh, that uh, my story is mostly false. I hadn't, you know, it's okay. I understand that's what they do. Yes. But what's interesting is she contacted John O'Looney and he co co collaborated or what I see. He, he, and she said she had contacted another person in New Zealand and they said they had seen the same thing. But then she contacts the, the, the National Funeral Directors Association here in the United States and they talked to their media spokesperson and all they would say is, oh, we've seen an increase in clotting of the vaccinated and unvaccinated. Well, what does that mean? You know? It's like, that's a blanket statement where nobody, you know, they're not, this, they're not admitting anything. And then uh, apparently she got in touch with some embalmer in, some, in Arizona or something like that. And they said it had to do with the refrigeration caused it. <laughs> I've been doing this for 20 something years now. I mean, I have embalmed people that have been in a cooler for a week and had no problem embalming these bodies. I've never seen this white fiber stuff before. And all of a sudden, not only do I see it once, I see it over and over and over again. So yes, well, there I are mean, people in- I, I can't fathom, Richard, the people that uh, go to sleep at night, put their head on their pillow and go to sleep at night completely refusing to investigate further or blatantly lying to the public, knowing that this is happening to people. These people have no integrity and they will face judgment for what they've done. Believe you me. 
Uh, but, but I mean, I, I really want to go through some of these images with you and maybe you can talk to us about what, what this is and whatever findings uh, you and, and your colleagues across the world. Just on, on that uh, interview with John O'Looney that you mentioned, for anyone watching this, please do go and watch it. It's on zemedia.com, Z-E-E-E media.com or Z-E-E-E media.com for, uh, for the Americans watching. Do go and watch that. In that interview, John says that he has found that he was he was confused as to why he wasn't getting calls about baby deaths considering or infant deaths considering we were hearing that it was happening but he wasn't being called to conduct any services uh and and he says that through his within his work he found that the hospital was cremating these children that were dying from the injections directly and this is how the cover-up was happening in the uk and i think uh, me and, and many others around the world now need to know if that's happening in our own countries but i'm going to share the screen i'll link I've, I've actually linked that interview in the description below for anyone who hasn't seen it so richard this first image uh is just blood i just see blood can you explain to us what we're looking at here Yes, what we're looking at here um, is is blood, but look at all of those little black, those little specks. Mm -hmm. See all those little specks in there? That is what I believe is called microclotting. And there's one piece there in the, uh, I don't know if you can see the cursor right here, that's a little bit larger. I believe, you know, yeah, right. Yep, right over in this, this right there, a little bit below. There's a little long line. Um, yep, right to the left of that. Anyway, that is uh, these little, yes, that right there. Yes, sorry. That right there, I'm guessing now, is maybe the beginning stages of some of the larger things that I'm seeing. These little black specks, I was talking to a, uh, a doctor, his name is Dr. Thorpe up in uh, Michigan. And he was looking at a lot of the images that I have. And he said, you know, the thing that concerned him, you know, these big clots, you know, sometimes they can be detected, but the thing that was concerning to him was what he called micro clotting. And I was like, okay, so let me, let me understand if, let me describe to you what I sometimes am seeing in the embalmer. When I'm embalming the body, it looks like like fine chalk or little grains of sand, or sometimes it's even like coffee grounds are coming out mixed in with the blood. It's no longer just a, a normal, you know, you know, pinkish reddish fluid running down the table, but it's got all this, these little, these little granules in there, like sand. He said, yes, he said, that's what, that's what concerns him the most is because those little tiny specks may be getting up into people's organs into small vessels and capillaries and getting lodged up in there and that could cause more health issues and so i i took some images of this and i even i i i tried to send you a video but it was apparently a little too big of of what it looks like when it's just when it's running down the table, you can see these uh, these things uh, flowing in the blood itself. That's unbelievable. And then, of course, we, we, if we move to this image, it looks like these are sort of larger clots. And again, for the audience, I apologize. I know this is graphic, but we need to see it. Yes. And again, here, if you look at these this this image, okay. So, if can you see my cursor? No. Okay, so if you look at the, a, a, one of these little bit larger uh, blobs of black, mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay, not that one, go to the right? Yep. Yes, right there. That's what a normal blood clot would look like typically. Right. Okay, right. but if you look at any one of these white fibrous things that you see in there, yes, yes that those are small in this picture and if you look down towards the bottom of the table you'll almost see like these little black dots some of them are a little bit bigger now yes and i'm yes i'm wondering if those are those microclots starting to clump together and they start to get larger over time 
you know, and of course I'm, I'm just speculating. I'm just, you know, sharing my observations. I'm not, I'm not a doctor, but I, I just know that something's not right. The blood isn't the same. Of course. And especially those white fibers are what's really abnormal. Can I ask Richard, is it, is it normal to see this many clots forming? I mean, we've got many black clots here. Yes. Um, no, <laughs> no, you don't normally see this many. Um, that, that, those are on the rise too, to seeing those things. But I, you know, uh, when we do in the years past, when we do see clots, sometimes, you know, they, they resemble like a grape jelly or at worst, maybe a little bit of grape jam. You can't really hold on to them because they fall apart. You can take some forceps, uh, like tweezers, and you can slowly pull them out, but typically they'll, they'll come apart. They are, uh, they're very smooth, typically, and they easily wash down the table in, in one solid piece. These pieces are landing on the table, and they're kind of like, they're heavy, so they're like, they're staying on the table. They're not just washing down the table like a normal blood clot would. Has anyone taken any of these clots and seen what, what they what the composition is? There, we are working on that. Um, I have sent this stuff to several doctors. Most of those um, uh, want to remain anonymous as far as, you know, they don't want me to share their name publicly. Um, these are probably some of the doctors that you may have heard of. Um, but there is, uh, Mike Adams is a, uh, the health ranger guy. He, um, I sent him some samples. Dr. Ruby got me in touch with him because it seems like this uh, process of getting the analysis has been extremely slow. And so he was within, I mean, literally within 48 hours, he already was doing microscopy. He called me when he got him. He was shocked when he saw it. Um, and he did it on the Alex Jones show, Live Microscopy, which was a fascinating show. I, I, I watched it and, and it was so good to see how he was able to do things to explain to people the tensile strength, the how stretchy these things are. Because he did it at the beginning of the show on, uh, it was on June 13th, Alex Jones show, if anybody wants to go back and find it. Um, yes, I watched he was that. Very it's, it's quick. phenomenal. It was a phenomenal presentation and everyone needs to see it. They, they do. And, and I know it's hard to see. It's hard to watch because it's, it's kind of gross in a sense. It's, it's unique way. But the problem is, is if we don't look into this, we'll never find a solution. We'll never find answers. We've got to know somehow we've got to know what its makeup is or what it's made of. I'm guessing, you know, in order to hopefully find some kind of therapeutics to try to help people break these things down in their body. Absolutely. In fact, as, as a matter of fact, I will link that in the description below as well for the audience um, so that they can watch that presentation if they haven't seen it already. And you're right, Richard, it's, it's, uh, we have to continue digging, doing investigation, asking questions uh, until we find exactly how to help the people that have this in their bodies. I mean, I, I want to ask you that, that, do you know anything about the timelines uh, between you know, the bodies that you're seeing and when they got injected. Is there, is there a trend between uh, Pfizer, Moderna? You're, you're asking an amazing question. That's what people like about you. <laughs> okay, so I've heard people and some of the frontline doctors sit there and try to make claims that they say, well, if you're going to have one of these problems, usually it's going to be within the 30 days of injection. I'm sorry, but I, what I'm seeing is any indication, then that's not true. Because I'm gonna hold up to you, this particular individual was vaccinated about a year prior to his death. Oh, wow. So, uh, you know, so how long is this stuff sticking around in people's bodies? How long does it take for it to de develop and get to um, this level right here? I don't know. It may be months. It may be a year. I mean, look at that. That's, 
it's, it's kind of really bad right there. So again, those microclots, I'm guessing, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I'm a, just an observer. I can only tell you what I see and what I experience firsthand. I'm curious to know if those microclots may be within the first 30 days. It may be one of those reasons why people act shortly after they get vaccinated, they start clotting and start creating those microclots. And then next thing you know, they have a stroke or a heart attack or what is it? The uh, sudden adult death syndrome. Death syndrome. Yeah, something like that. Um, I've got, I, unfortunately, I've had to embalm some of these people that uh, didn't wake up in the morning. I've had to embalm some people that were apparently very healthy individuals and drop dead getting ready for work. And then I find, you know, these these kind of strange substances in their in their in their blood system. And they shouldn't be there. So the, so just to confirm the timeline of those systems that we're calling them forming in someone's body is different for different patients. It could be, could be a couple of months, could be a year. So, so I guess until we know what they are, we don't really know what's taking them a different length of time to form, right? Yes. Now, let me give you a little bit of a, a somewhat of a hopeful thing. I have had a, a few where, um, because this is starting to get, people are starting to question, I had a, uh, there was a family that asked, uh, well, there's been a couple that asked the uh, funeral home to ask me if they had strange clots in their body, in their, in their loved one. And, um, and, and I have had to say yes, but I've also had, you know, a couple where they, they did not have strange clots that came out while I was embalming. Now, to be clear, the things that I get are only what comes out. You know, I have no idea, you know, I, the, the stuff that I get, these strange clots are the clots that come out of the body. That doesn't mean all of them came out. That just means this is what came out while I was embalming. And you know, a lot of these are, are long stranded, they branch off and it's possible there's more clots within that body that won't come out because they're kind of lodged in, in, in the vessel somewhere. Right. So, I mean, you know, but so there are people that um, were vaccinated that I know were vaccinated and that were not these crazy clots. Why that's the, why is it not all of them are the same? I, I can't answer that. I'm assuming not everybody's allergic to peanut butter. So, you know, some people it may affect differently than others. But again, we, we have to figure out what this is and we have to acknowledge that this is an issue so we can move forward to try to help people. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with you. I want to keep going through some of these photos, Richard, and you can tell us what we're seeing here. So uh, this, th these look a little bit different to the previous images. They are. I took this image because this person was full of these little small ones. I mean, you can see um i don't know you know they, they are small they're very small but again i wanted to be able to show people how not always are these they these big huge clots but sometimes there are a lot of these little small ones you saw the first image you showed were like more like the micro class these little teeny tiny ones right yes, yes. and then this next image is something that looks like that one member where you, you pointed out that little bit of a long one in the middle of that first picture, mm. it, where it's like, okay, that, um, that right there is, is what I'm showing on that next image you showed, this just a little longer where it's had more time to develop. Again, it's my speculation. I, I'm not the doctor, I'm just an observer. And that's just my thoughts on, on those images. Right, right. I've I've got another image here that I want to bring up. I just sure. want to, I just want to uh, zoom in a little bit for the audience. What um, the thing that I I want to ask as well, and and forgive my ignorance, Richard, because I really don't know anything about blood clotting. Uh, 
in regular blood clots, do we see clumps and stringy blood clots or are they generally only clumps? Generally, they're only clumps. They're smooth generally. But this is a great picture. This is another example that I took a picture because it's, it's I'm showing how these small ones, if you look at these small ones, again, you, the very first picture was the microclots. This is similar to the last picture you sent, but you see a little bit more of those little like coffee ground type pieces getting larger and larger. Then you also notice some of this squiggly, uh, like the squiggly stuff. Yes. yes, like that, like that one right there. Go up a little bit with your cursor right there. Look at that one right there. Mm -hmm. And so if you look, it seems like what's happening is the, they're, they're starting to form larger pieces over here towards the right hand part of the screen above that big one. That one right there. Look at the, the design and the way that looks. And when you start moving to some of your larger images, you're going to notice it's going to have a similar look, but it's going to look much larger. I'm curious if you were to take some of those little specks in the, that I was in that first image and put it under a microscope, would it look like this, what we are seeing, just a lot smaller? Smaller. Right. That's, and that's my guess. It's just my guess, but I, I'm beginning to see a pattern here when when I'm wondering if, if they're all related. This is what I mean by the blood is different. People's blood isn't the same. Well, that, that's clear. I, I wonder, Richard, whether, you know, in this, in this next image, uh, so we're obviously seeing, the, I, I'm presuming this is the fibrous clots yes. that, that you've been discussing. So is, are these forming into those fibrous clots or is that different? I think they're to I I am beginning to believe they're connected right look at that image right there okay so with your cursor uh put it closer to the right hand side go up right there a little bit up up down go down and to right there starting at that one follow that up you see that area it goes a little bit further up mm -hmm. a little bit further right there stop right there see that ball right there above it yes Look at how that white fibrous stuff goes into that and then it comes out. You that that one on the right hand side where you started on the right hand side was another yes. ball like that. I smashed it to see what would be inside of it. Right. That came out like a ball. If you look at further out, you just follow that. It's like the white fibrous thing is going into it and then it comes back out. It goes down into this Y and you can follow it all the way over to the left hand side of the screen. You see a big bulb right there, right there. And you notice like it's, it's almost, it almost to me looks, I guess maybe almost like you might expect an ovary to look like, you know, yes. it's weird looking. Um, but that white fiber stuff, if you can zoom in on it, you'll see it's like there, it's like a marbling of that white fibrous material. Oh. There you sorry, go. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're trying to, yeah, there you go. <laughs> marbling. See, you, you see how it's kind of marbling into that? Um, it's like, um, it's marbling, yeah, move it a little bit more to the left. And uh, there you go. And that, that little sack right over there. Hmm. I found that very strange. This is a relatively recent finding. Um, I hadn't really noticed anything like this before. This came out of the individual as I was embalming. Um, sometimes we're using forceps to help pull these things out. And some, you know, I think what happened is, is once the pressure got high enough, it pushed this thing out without me busting it. And I happen to have um, that sample right here in my hand. And you can see you can see it. See that white is going around. It looks like a. It looks like a sack. Is that, it's, can you it's, see it? Okay. It's, we can see. So just, just what you're showing us now. Are you saying that's the same as what we were looking at on the screen before? That is it. It's that okay, is. It. it didn't look at that big on the screen. So this is actually quite large. Well, I mean, you know, here's the. 
whoop, <laughs> here's, here's the vial in my hand. Okay, so these are, you know, they're, they're kind of have to, I kind of have to cram them down inside there. But I mean, you can look at my pinky and you can look at like my, my pinky nail is about the size of that ball. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's it, stunning. <laughs> I, I mean, th th there are no words, Richard, to, to think that this is inside of people. I mean, we, we warned about these injections uh, early on. We said we don't know what they're going to do to people. And the fact that this is just happening on such a large scale, but, but more so the fact that the scale that it's happening on and there's no investigation shows me that this was something that was expected. I could be wrong in my, in my assumption, but if you look at, for example, that <clears throat> people like Fauci are on the television still continuing to tell people that this is safe and affecting despite, effective, despite knowing how many people it's killed or permanently disabled. The fact that I we agree. have this much evidence of, of whatever these things are growing inside of people and there's not a peep on it as well, that shows me that that was also intentional. I truly wonder what they know about this that we don't know yet. You know, um, you know, I've heard a lot of talk about, you know, that this is intentional, that it's a part of global depopulation and all that. And I, and I truly don't want to believe that. I, I truly don't. However, you know, it's the more they try to suppress truth, the more they try to like the fact, politifact, I mean, right away, you know, I'm mostly false. I've had people try to look me up on Google and they tell me, you know how many negative articles there are about you? <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I don't, I don't dig into it, but by suppressing it and by mandating people get this injection, if you don't have sovereignty over your own body, you have nothing. I don't understand why we got to force people to get a vaccine. I know people, I have, like I said, I have family members and friends that are vaccinated. And a lot of those people that are vaccinated need to realize I'm not their enemy. I, I'm not. I, I could have just as easily been vaccinated as well. But these people that are up on top seem to be wanting to pin each other, pin us against each other, the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated, yeah. the left over the right, the person who's transgendered over the person who's not. I mean, when does this stop? They are, as everybody is fighting and arguing over stupid stuff, what's lurking inside of them could be killing them. And I'm not here, listen, if they find out that this is caused by, I don't know, you know, poison in the water. And climate it's not the change. Vaccine, climate <laughs> change. That's fine. Let's, let's acknowledge that this is a real thing yes. and let's yes. figure this thing out. Absolutely. But because they keep pushing this vaccine thing, it makes me, it makes it hard for me to believe that this is not some nefarious thing killing mankind and i believe i'm beginning to really believe humanity is what's at stake and so we need to stop arguing with each other about who's at fault and come together and i'm talking everybody okay. i mean i'm talking from world leaders people that are in politics that they know you can't tell me they don't know I'm sorry, you know, I, I know I don't want to make this political or anything, but you know, I'm disappointed, you know, Donald Trump goes around and spews how proud he is of this vaccine. How does he not know? You can't tell me he doesn't have advisors advising him, showing him some of this stuff that's happening or the stuff that he sees. And, and again, you know, I supported the man, but if, I, I'm, I'm losing faith in all of them and everyone. I don't know any real politicians that are out there saying, Hey, we need to stop this. They're all like, we need to keep mandating it or encouraging people to get this shot. Even the babies now. 
Look, we've had some stand up here in Australia and say we've, we've actually had one brave senator, Senator Roberts, to, in, in Parliament saying this is genocide. He actually uh, provided me with evidence as well of the nanotechnology that he witnessed through whistleblower scientists here in Australia with his own eyes and recorded on camera the nanotech forming from the vials under the microscope. Nothing has happened with that since, though, and this isn't me driving a bus over him at all. He's a, he's, he's a man that has tried very, very hard as a senator compared to all the others who are contributing to the genocide. Uh, <clears throat> but, but at the end of the day, if, if we have this evidence, if people around the world have this evidence, something more needs to be done. You can't be looking at the images that we're looking at here and tell me that, you know, it doesn't require a criminal investigation. It doesn't require an investigation into the deaths of these people. This is a pharmaceutical company killing people. And any government official who's pushed this is, has taken part in the murder of these people. There's no sugarcoating this. There is no sugarcoating this. This is happening to unsuspecting innocent people. You're right. And, and there are, there are I've, I've talked to several people. Um, we, know, we know there are people in the medical community that are seeing this stuff. We know that they're questioning it. But so many of them were threatened with their job if they didn't get this vaccine. So many of them went and got the shot because they didn't want to take a chance of losing their job. And I've worked, I've, I've, I know a lot of these people uh, and, and it's not, it's why are we not acknowledging this stuff? I, we have, they, they've, they've, they have shut medications down for far less. They just shut down Skittles. Here. They just shut down Skittles because one of the ingredients is, is damaging to the DNA. Well, what about the DNA damage that's in that's happening to people who've had these injections, which we now know from the study out of Lund University in Sweden. We know it's happening. So yes. what about stopping it for that reason? And I want to say something, Richard. I have compassion on the people who were coerced, who thought that they had no problem. Uh, I'm, I'm getting fired up here because, I, I, you know, what you're saying is, is important to consider. It's not that I don't have compassion on the people who <clears throat> are good people. Like John said to me, I know these people, they're good people, but they just were pushed, tricked, all of the above. Okay. But these people, okay, you're good people. You're just people that, are, that were afraid to speak up or you were afraid to go against the government guidelines at the time. You can't be afraid of that anymore. You can't look at these images or look at the people that are dropping dead, sudden adult death syndrome and doctors are baffled. You can't be seeing that and know what's going on. I know that there are some people who are hypnotized. I don't deny that. But you can't be on the fence and know what's going on and still be a coward. I'm sorry, if you, are, if you know what's going on and you've been silent and you are still silent, you cannot be a coward anymore. The time for cowardice is over. People are dying and we're giving this to children. Yes, and you know, and, and, and I hear your passion and I'm, and I'm with you. And I have said this before. One of the reasons why some of these people are, are fighting against their own thing is because I, nobody wants to admit when they're wrong, it's a part of it. But I remember, you know, Nazi Germany, if they make this look at history and look at how many people were killed. And why were they killed? Because good people were afraid to say anything and they went along with it. And when they saw what was happening underneath them, it was so grotesque, they probably didn't wanna see it. They looked beyond it, they looked over it. But in the meantime, during all of that stuff, millions of people were killed and millions suffered. And I don't want to be the person. I don't want to be the person that was in Nazi Germany back at that day that saw what was happening and was so afraid that I just allowed people to go to their death. I feel like I have an obligation and a, and a moral compass, like John O'Looney says, I really I love that moral compass, to do what's right 
I could be, I mean, I risked my entire career. People could have come out and shut me down. They could have sat there and said, hey, uh, Richard, you're too controversial. I don't want you within 10 miles of my facility. Now, I've never called out a funeral home that I work for, and I don't ever plan on it. Um, and maybe that's what gives me a little bit of freedom to come out with what I have is because I'm an independent person. I'm a trade embalmer. I don't work for a funeral home. I work with many funeral homes. But I have an obligation, a moral obligation, because everybody's life matters. Everybody. And it's getting really, really hard to sometimes sit here and watch the, 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 the television and they come up with a commercial about how safe and effective it is and to save your you know, people around you, you need to go and get this vaccine, knowing what I know. And I know there's a lot of people out there seeing this. A lot of them are still afraid. I, I wish more would come out publicly and, and back me up, kind of like, um, like I heard Ryan Cole said on one of his interviews, I don't want to be the only tall blade of grass out here. Where are the other, where are the other experts, the other scientists? We've got, you know, people like him and you got, you know, uh, Peter McCullough and, you know, all these other people. And, and, and that's great. But we need more and more and more of them. Jim Thorpe is out there. There are so many that are starting to come out and, and, and as this thing continues, and because they don't stop it, and they keep pushing it, is making it so hard for me not to believe that this is some kind of a trick, a way to sit there and, and, and reduce the population. Yes. I, I, I hate to say it, but it just seems to be that's what's happening. Because, like I said, they have they have taken drugs off the market for way less than what we have here. Way Absolutely. less. Absolutely. And, and I want people, anyone who's watching this, who may be in the boat of the people that I described before, which is that you know what's going on, but you're too scared to speak out, just let it sink in. And I'm, I'm not attacking you, but I, I believe, Richard, that when you love people, you'll tell them the truth. I, that's, and that's Even that's as my hard family. as it is. Correct. So please stop being a coward. You yes. are you are going to bed at night knowing that millions of people are dying. It's going to start happening to children and you're not saying a thing. Stop being a coward. And the world will be a better place for it. You may lose your job. I can't go back to my old career, Richard. I've been, I, I've been, I used to work for a government funded company. Now I'm out here telling people the government's trying to kill you. I can't go back ever, you know? But thank God he's blessed me with this platform. He's given me the opportunity to get the truth out there to people to potentially save lives. And hopefully Z Media has done that. And, and I believe that it has. And to God be the glory. But I mean, uh, you know, what, what will happen when you do the right thing is that good things will follow and people will support you. And people support people that have integrity. And that is what people are doing with you. You know, yes, you've, you've put your name out there. There are slander pieces about you, yet you are a hero in the world's eyes because you've had the courage to say something. There needs to be more. I can't believe that out of billions of people out there that there are only a handful speaking. Enough is enough. We need to, we really need to get, get more people screaming about this from the rooftops because the reality is, and if you follow my work, you know that they're ramping up with, with their plans for the Great Reset. You know that the World Health Organization is on the verge of pushing their medical dictatorship. This stuff is going to happen. And all the while, we've got this stuff growing in people and potentially now children. It is horrific. And I... I I'm sorry, I know we've gone off track a little bit, Richard, but I don't think it's off track. It's, it's very relevant because people need to think about the fact that this is potentially now growing in children, in babies, in six-month-old babies. What is this? I don't know. Um, you, uh, you know, the, the, the whole idea, uh, one of the fears I have, I, I, I've, I've seen stuff about the Great Reset. I've seen stuff about all these, all these, all these things that, you've been talking about and, and a few others. 
and 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 it's so hard. We we don't need to be each other's enemies, and I feel like that's what they want us to do. Um, they've they've financially collapsed. So many economies are hurting right now, and they continue to push this stuff, making people more sick. Supply chains are bad. You know, people aren't able to you know get uh, food like they used to in in other areas of the world, and I feel like, you know, everybody's going to want to come out swinging. And how do you fully collapse an entire system? You get people to fight each other. You get them to go ahead and all, our whole medical system. And, and I hate to say it, but it's so hard to trust my own medical system right now. Of course. And think about, you know, they've already spent trillions of dollars in just this just destroyed economies all over the world. And imagine we sit there and now we're gonna, we're gonna fight each other and we're gonna sue even the, the doctors that push this vaccine on its people. Or let's sue the employers that mandated it on their employees. Let's sue the pharmaceutical companies to cover compensation losses. Well, think about what is that going to do? It might complete the Great Reset totally destroy the financial system because everybody will run out of money. Imagine all those doctors being res held responsible for encouraging their patients to get this. I hadn't thought of they it. They may be held angle, responsible. Richard. I, had, I and, honestly and, hadn't thought of it from that angle. Even the class action lawsuits to sit there and bankrupt the government would, would further advance it probably. You know? it, exactly. So, it will advance everything. And, and here we are. And that's why I feel like they want us to fight each other. They're, they're, aching for us to have some kind of a war, whether it be against each other or whether it be against Russia or who knows what. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I just know there is a danger about the anger. Um, people need to be held accountable 100%, absolutely. But if we don't somehow come together and unite, and I, and I believe God is the answer, uh, Maria, I, God is all the glory. I, I feel like he, that is the answer. And, and unfortunately, we as a people, I don't think, um, I don't think we want to take care of ourselves. We want to be taken care of. And that's yes. our fault. We should have accountability and we should have integrity. And I'm not saying there aren't people out there that need help. And I'm all for helping them. But people need to take responsibility for themselves. They need to love one another. They need to respect one another. They need to uh, work together to figure out what the heck is this stuff? Why are so many people dropping dead? It's pretty daggum obvious in my opinion. My gut says it's the vaccine is responsible for this. Well, is there something else? Possibly. I don't know. I wanted to ask you, actually, Richard, are you finding this in uninjected individuals? I have, um, I have had a few that were not injected with the vaccine. How much but do we know about you, them? For example, were their partners injected? Um, see, that's, that's tough. Um, let me go back to the one where I, I know I've had some that were um, that were not injected, but then later I found out they received a blood transfusion right. or some kind of blood product, right. and I and I and I've and I've asked some other doctors, some of the doctors that I've been sending these samples to, is it possible that through blood transfusion they've gotten whatever it is, whether it be the spike protein or whatever that makes their body generate this stuff. And, and unfortunately, the answer is that is a possibility. Of course, we can't prove it yet, but it's concerning because if that's the case, the blood banks around the world are contaminated with this same, with this stuff that might, might hurt them, just like the HIV back years ago yes. in the blood bank, yes. when they found out that people were transmitted through blood transfusions. We've got just a few minutes left, so I'd really love to, to just go through a few few more of these images, Richard, and we've, we're so grateful for your time. Um, sure. Again, this is uh, similar to, to, I'm guessing that this is before they've been washed, what we're seeing in these bottles, these white fibrous 
stringy. Right. Usually uh, a lot of times. So sometimes these come out just like this. Sometimes they come out um, with blood a lot. Like this one here, you can see sometimes there's like these. And you know that ball sack. If you look at some of these, it almost looks like, well, maybe that was a kind of like a ball sack on there. I don't know. But um, sometimes blood is attached to them. Uh, scroll through some of those other pictures and and let's let's kind of this one was horrific. <laughs> this one was absolutely horrible. But if you look at that, these look at these these images and remember when I told you on like the micro clotting, and then we went to the little bit bigger ones and then the bigger ones. Yes. You notice their similarities. Even in this, if you look at the smaller pieces, you start to see these little stringy structures. And then of course you get to the ones that are like super Sorry. huge. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So you notice even the normal blood clots don't look like smooth blood anymore. They're more like, I don't know, they're almost like a jam like. But that white fiber stuff is definitely the stuff that I'm referring to as the real unusual thing. And all of these little squiggly lines and all these little specks that are in the blood, it's like, are those just smaller pieces? I don't know. Let's move to another picture that you got in there. This was another interesting one right here. Some of these came out of the artery, that one that's on the right hand side uh, um, by my fingers came out of the carotid artery. That's a very large piece. Whether there's more to it that was that didn't come out, I don't know. So uh, if you a, go, that's not a clot though. Just just so the audience knows what we're looking at. That's this is the white fibrous material. That's the right? white fibrous and stuff. Yes. John O'Looney calls it calamari. He says it's yeah. very, <laughs> which is the most disgusting way of describing it. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's true. It has the texture of kind of like calamari. Right. That's true. It does. Can you go to that picture uh, up there, uh, higher up? Go right there. This one. This, yes. Now this came, these, these were not rinsed off, but it, I've, I put a ruler there. And you, you see 17 inches is what that, that, that big one was. It was roughly 17 inches long. That is one long strand. And how how and, and can a yes, human being survive with something like that in their body? I, I believe they're they're somehow riding in along the uh, the vascular system, so blood is able to go around it, right? Um, and then until it can't, of course. Yeah, go to another image right there. So this, this could is, be. I mean, sorry, sorry to cut you off, Richard, but this could no. very well be. You're saying blood can sort of go around it. It could be in many more people. Who, uh, yes. I mean, it, it definitely is. If you're saying that it's sometimes a year after injection that these people that you that you're that they're that they're dying and they've got this stuff in their bodies, this could be right. so many more people that we're not aware of, and it could be multiplying. It could be getting bigger. God only knows. Right now, I, this is a great image because I want you to notice the size of those clots up there. One of those clots is probably, I'm going to guess, is probably close to 12 inches long. Okay. But look at the leg itself. Do you see any, does that look like a leg that's rotten, getting ready to fall off of somebody? No, right. it looks totally normal. And this is what I'm finding. A lot of these people that I have, you've seen the images online where people that are vaccine injured and they're like the guitarist that lost his fingertips and they start turning black. That's necrosis. Um, those are signs that there's some uh, circulation issues going on. But I am finding this in people with their, 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 their legs and their extremities, they look normal. They don't show the signs of there's a blood circulation problem there. Right. It's, it's uh, the, the, the perfect of, uh, globalist cover up. Yep. And again, look at these right here. These are small. These came out of an artery as well. But you remember, like I showed you early, earlier on some of those smaller images, look at the, the shape and look at how they are similar. But the difference is as they get bigger, they still have that unique kind of weird shape often. Yes, yeah, so squiggles. So, 
the, the yeah, they, they, yeah, they do. It's, it's insane. And that this one there so came disturbing. out. This is so disturbing. That, that one came out in one piece and it exploded when it finally came out. Um, it came out of the carotid artery. Um, pieces of it are, have broken off, obviously, when I was trying to get some of it out. But the pressure inside finally burst this thing through, and um, and it and we had to stop to uh, to clean up because um, it made such a mess. That picture down there that you're looking at at the bottom right there, that is the first image that I took. Yes, um, this is actually Dr. Jane has shared this image with me before. Yes, and if you look at the length of that thing, that is, I mean, that is a leg. You can see underneath the knee. That just gives you an idea how long that thing is. And if you can zoom in um, up underneath that calf under there, if you can get a little bit close, there you go. Now zoom in to the right. To the right? Move to the right, yep. All right, stop right there, right? See that real shiny black stuff? That looks like a normal clot, right? right. But look over to the right of that and see that little white squiggly stuff. Those are smaller ones that came out during the embalming session. So they're not always these big, huge ones like this, this, this thing that down there at the center of your screen. They have, there's many different kinds. Now this person was not very old. He was, uh, I wanna say he wasn't any older than uh, mid fifties. Um, this person I found out, my, I found out later was vaccinated as well. Um, and that was back in September, whether they were, you know, they started giving boosters, I think, in the original round. Wasn't it around last fall sometime? I don't know if this, but I know that person was vaccinated. Um, it, but, you know, it, it's just a crying shame that, that we're seeing this kind of stuff inside of people. And we've got to figure out what it is, Maria, because, you know, we can't unvaccinate the vaccinated people. And if they want to continue to close their eyes and not, and not acknowledge this stuff, then, you know, we'll never be able to help them. But we're fighting to try to get answers. We, uh, Dr. Ruby has, uh, has gotten, you know, Mike Adams involved. He is doing chemical analysis on these things. He's done microscopy. Uh, hopefully some more is coming out very soon. I was contacted today to send um, samples to another pathologist in a different part of the country. I have sent these things out to several different people. Some of them have the position and power to do something. Um, some of them might be holding off on results until maybe somebody like Mike Adams comes out and shares what he sees. And then maybe once you get several different places to, to compare notes and say, you know what, I mean, granted, these all come from different people, but there are similarities and these are the similarities. And so this is maybe, you know, something new that they're going to have to figure out a way to, uh, to help people to dissolve these things within their body before it takes over. Because I think these little small clots can cause heart attacks and strokes. No problem. No problem. One of these little clots in your head it's going to stop blood flow and, and you're going to have a stroke and you know and it's unfortunately only, it's so only a many of people time. it's only a matter of time for so many people richard and, and this is why you know if, if you're watching this um and, and you are in one of these industries that can speak out i'm i'm really appealing to you right now you know contact me through the website there's a contact section on the website um i'm, I'm just specifically asking for people from an industry that can help um you know if you want to stay anonymous that's fine i'll take the heat it doesn't matter but particularly in australia we need people to speak up um because people's lives are at risk you can see what's happening to them through these images and again it's not the first time that these images have been shown but we need to keep talking about it we need to keep showing this so that it will spark the courage in others and richard i just want to thank you for your courage i want to thank you for bringing this information out for the world um, it only takes one to to show that courage and show that integrity in order for others to stand up and so if you're the tall blade of grass uh, so be it 
um, it's time for others to, to, to come up and, and, and really step up and, and do what's right for humanity. If you're watching this, please do share this video. If you're watching on Rumble, give it a like and, uh, and share it. And if you're watching it on the website, again, please share this link with everyone. Get this information to spread. Get this to the right people. If you know people that are embalmers, get it to them. If you know doctors, if you know specialists, anyone in the medical industry, get this to them. Get them to watch it, review it. Um, and, and hopefully, hopefully, Richard, people will do the right thing with it. I want to make a quick mention for our sponsors, Survival Supplies Australia, helping you prepare for what is coming, including food, uh, long life food, water, uh, solar power. Their website is the most comprehensive in the country. Do head over there. Also, Dr. Zelenko. I recently interviewed Anne Vandersteel and Kevin Jenkins from the Zelenko Freedom Foundation. Uh, Dr. Zelenko has saved thousands of lives through his protocol. He did say that Z Detox was something that could help prevent blood clots. So please do your research, but visit through the link below um, in, in the description. Richard, how do people follow your work and, and, and support you? You know, I'm, I'm kind of glad that you asked that question because the truth of the matter is I have no book. I have no website. I have nothing. I'm not here to, to try to uh, monetize on anything. I am simply just trying to share my observations and what I see. So there is the, the only thing people can do for me is to sit there and, and support me by uh, praying for m me and my family uh, because things are kind of crazy. Um, I give everything is to God and I have absolutely, I'm not asking for anything just for people to open up their eyes. They need, they need to see this stuff. We don't need to be each other's enemies. I believe the answer is totally, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta humble ourselves and, and repent and, uh, and, and turn from our wicked ways, and so to speak. But I do believe we need to have um, accountability for those that are behind the, the forcing people and the push to, uh, to in infect people with this vaccine if we find out that that is the actual cause. So, but I just wanna thank you. You're a hero, uh, Maria. Um, really love your videos and I hope you keep up the good work. Well, thank you, Richard, for everything that you're doing. Thank you for being the first one to speak out about this and hopefully many others will follow and definitely, definitely will be praying for you and your family. God is with you. Take care and God bless. Thank you so much.